Okay. <coughs> uh, done with done with the uh, errands. We head back now. We still gotta get. <coughs> I might go a little bit quicker <coughs> than usual back because I bought a small shrimp for my an LG eating shrimp for my aquarium. I wanna. <coughs> I don't want to stay in the cold as more than necessary. But I think I left off at the differences between a gas bike and an electric bike. So, and then I'll talk about what, the, what my plans are. So the difference gas bike has more power overall. It has more sustained delivery of power because of the gas. Um, I think the ratio is like one over, a gas bike has 64 times as much power per gram or something like that as a electric bike or <coughs> with lithium batteries. But of course, it's the conversion of that power which is important. An internal combustion engine, it's only like what 50%, 40% efficient depending depending on the engine that you have. So maybe with those small engines it's even less, like 33% or something like that. Because you lose a lot of that power to heat. While an electric motor, especially the brushless motors, are 90% efficient, so they use power very efficiently. But the, the problem is the limiting factor is the is the battery. Um, the other good thing about the electric bike is the near instant acceleration, the, the torque of the motor. I didn't record it here, but I had to cross a really big street with cars um, getting to my last errand. And I pretty much I pretty much juiced it or slammed it pretty hard. I was going like I went zero to like 32 in like four seconds blew past all the cars, got well away from the danger. Uh, you can't do that with a gas bike because the RPM or the dyno curve is pretty much linear. And, or is a S, whatever that shape is, a hockey puck shape. What that means is that, especially with the four stroke where they have a centrifugal transmission or gear reduction box. That means that you have to help pedal to get a you know get it going. You want you want to do the same for electric, but with electric you really don't need to pedal off the line if you don't want to. Um, especially with this bike. You should because there's less strain on the chain and and on the batteries and the motor. But you don't really need to. With a gas bike, you have to because of the, but just the way the power delivery RPM to torque curve is. <coughs> um, so, so I guess what I'm saying is that there's advantages and disadvantages to both. The main advantage to electric bikes is that they use power very efficiently, 90%. There's almost instant torque. So you get going like right away. Open that window. Hey, yeah. So that's my, uh, that was my neighbor that I bike with sometimes when I had the uh, 500 watt rear hub. <coughs> He's a pretty big biker, oh, like just a regular biker. But it does hold the discussion behind him and the fact that he doesn't understand that an electric bike with cogging 
and all the weight to pedal it compared to a high-end like he is a I think it's a high-end hybrid uh, gravel bike there's no comparison he has much more efficiency than I ever will have so when I pedal at his speed to keep up with him or just a little bit below even with the engine it's there's no comparison I have to I had to use so much more strength and power to do that. But anyway, um, so electric, instant torque, very efficient use of power, low maintenance, fun. You don't have to worry about it as much. But with a gas motor, you have almost infinite range because there's gas stations everywhere. Uh, with these small engines, especially the four strokes, the Honda clones, they're very efficient. So, you know, you're getting 80 to 100 miles per gallon. Downside is, Downside to electric is the range. This is a 16 amp hour, 72 volt battery. I think if I were to ride it aggressively from a full charge, I only get 20 miles. If I'm doing what I'm doing now, just casually riding, you know, 14, 50 miles into the wind, maybe like. 25, 30, close to 30 miles with the tailwind. Maybe I'll get 30, 40 on a full charge. And of course the batteries degrade over time. Gas doesn't degrade over time unless you keep the gas in the tank, which you know, obviously you should not do. So that sudden jerk right there is a product of this. Yeah, this derailleur is not really good. Um, so there's advantages and disadvantages on both sides. I still prefer the electric just because I like the instant torque. I like the, and I also like the stealthness of it. You know, you don't really hear anything. With a gas bike, when it's at the high RPMs and it has all these mechanical parts, you know, the gear reduction box going, the chain going, you know, the muffler and all that other crap, you can hear it. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not that great. Weight is about the same because the batteries are, are heavy. The engines, the gas engine is heavy. The, the engine itself, the gas engine, is a little bit heavier, heavier than a electric engine. But you have the battery weight also, which is, so I think the, the electric bike is actually a little bit more heavy than the gas, simply because of that. You know, gas doesn't weigh anything. It's pretty light, especially with the, so on, a, on these gas motorized bikes, you have about a, a stock is like a third of a uh, third of a gallon. You can get uh, two third gallons bigger gas tanks. I had a two thirds. I mean, I didn't have to stuff like that. I didn't really have to uh, gas up at all. You no, know, which sometimes you run into the problem of having the gas go back because I, don't, I didn't use it that, that much, that much. But anyway, um, so there's advantages and disadvantages of both. So originally I thought about just a hybrid, you know, gas powered um, bike going to a uh, shift kit going to a either probably a front hub or sorry a gas bike going to just a standard direct drive um, on the left side of the wheel rear hub or this uh, rear drive 
and then like a front uh, hub 500 to 1000 watt uh, direct <coughs> hub motor, gearless hub motor. So in that case, I would just use the engine or use I'll use both the electric and the gas to get up to speed. So I pretty much don't have to pedal at that point with both engines going at once. And then once I'm up to speed, I'll just use the gas, gas engine to keep me at speed. I thought about that a lot. And I wanted to do that. But actually, I didn't want to deal with gas enough. And the whole transmission thing. Like the motors, the, the Honda clone motor, the HS142F is a very reliable motor. I love it. It's, it was a great motor, very reliable. But the transmissions on these things are just horrible. And under, you know, and connecting it directly to the rear wheel, like it just destroys the rear wheel. Especially on this cheaper bike with, uh, with questionable bearings. You know, it's going to destroy that wheel. I'm going to have to get a new wheel. So then it brought me... So then... I thought about it a little bit more. And... Like I went on a couple cruises. And modern cruise ships, they have diesel electric drive. Which is, they have a diesel generator. And... That electricity drives a uh, electric motors, and for a cruise ship, that is the most efficient and also the practical usage of power because the electric motors allow them to have almost instant uh, torque. You know, like uh, propeller speed um, to get out, you know, to maneuver, and also the diesel generator generates electricity for the rest of the uh, truck too. Um, as well as a lot of the conventional trains nowadays have also have the same principle as well. An electric, uh, <coughs> an electric engine and diesel generator. Some of the trains, for the exact same purpose, near instant torque. So I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm not gonna use the 49cc engine because that's quite, it's quite large. But I'm going to use the little sister to that, which is the 38cc engine. Originally, I thought to use a 25cc two-stroke engine, but I got discouraged because folks said that the metal urging on those engines are pretty bad and uh, they're not reliable. It's like a weed whacker engine, which makes sense. I actually agree. I don't think, you know, for my... I don't think the metallurgy on the two, on two strokes are good at all. They use uh, not really good metals to make them. <clears throat> so it would be a serial hybrid, basically doing the same principle as the cruise ships and the electro diesel, um, the electro diesel trains. So I'm gonna put a 38 cc. Uh, gas engine. It comes with a gas tank attached to the engine. Um, and that would generate around 200 to 400 watts of, of power connected in parallel to my battery and to the motor. So 400 watts is not a lot of power, especially for a high 3000 watt system. But it's the passive power, just like the passive charging, you know, the addition of power over time. It will add, it will add quite a lot of range 
and I'm hoping it will let me ride my bike for an entire day just at you know the speeds I'm going at now like 15 20 into the wind 20 30 with a tailwind it's not a new thing I've seen it done a couple times but it's definitely rare to have something like that and the legalities of that is fine here in Wisconsin because they allow gas and motorized bikes anyway um, but in other states I'm not sure I'm not quite so sure but anyway so that's the plan I'll go in more into detail with the exact schematics of what I'm gonna do but the bullet points is <coughs> same battery attach a 38cc engine to the rear rack it comes with a gas tank and then I'll turn a probably a 400 or 500 watt generator engine or brushless engine in reverse so that would generate a probably a 300 to 500 watt current I'll have to use a boost controller or a step up boost controller to change the voltage from I believe it's 24 volts from those motors uh, up to a charging voltage of 84 now that would be interesting to do that's a quite a that's quite a huge step up from what I read on the specifications of those step up um, converters or boost, control, boost converters they can go up to 90 volts or something like that but a 20 I'm not sure I'm not quite so sure because 24 <coughs> 24 to Twenty-four to uh, um, eighty-four. That's quite a big. That's quite a big leap. So we'll see. And for the and for the motor and system altogether, I'm going to buy probably a, the friction drive kit from um, from Bikeberry. So what a friction drive is, it basically is like a clamp-on system for your rear wheels, a gas motorized bike system. Um, it's around 230. The engine by itself costs around 140. <clears throat> so the idea is that if I screw up on the whole generator system, I can always just go back to the hybrid and do a friction drive and an electric drive or an electric motor if I screw up or anything like that. But I don't think I'll screw up. It's, it seems pretty simple to do. So I'm just going to go. <coughs> so I'll just ride around a little bit, keep talking. Yeah, but that's the idea. Um, and it's all about just, you know, passively. So the battery I have now, it's definitely enough. You know, when they talk about electric solutions and gas solutions, they look at segments in the market. You know, it's just the last mile. Maybe you'll get a scooter for like a push scooter, electric scooter for that stuff. Is it, you know, a metro, downtown commute, which is like 10 minutes or 10 miles, 20 miles, you know, which is great for an electric bike? Is it a longer commute? And is it a time, time sensitive commute? Stuff like that. And. Yeah, so <clears throat> Yeah, you can't do that on a gas bike, I can tell you that right now. Well you could if you have a good gas bike. Um anyway. Yeah, so they have different segments and I don't like to be pigeonholed into any of those segments. And it's, you know what, while I, prefer, I at the moment prefer electric bike over a gas bike, I still have that range anxiety. 
the battery on here is not very large for a 72 volt system, but it's still substantial. It can carry you 20 miles hard riding, 30, a little bit about 30 miles, like you know, just casual riding, as I'm doing now. That's not bad for an electric bike, but I still had that range anxiety. Um, so I like to try this hybrid system. And I'm never sure what it's called. Uh, some guys on the, uh, the gas motorized bike, um, no, I, on the forum, I've been in there quite a bit because I, you know, I had two gas bikes before. They, they think there was a term that they used. They call it one guy called it a, a serial hybrid, which will make sense to me. I like that name, serial hybrid. It's not a hybrid because a hybrid has both gas propulsion or the gas motor drives as part of the drive train as well as electric. That's a hybrid. The gas motor, the gas motor here is just going to drive a generator, which feeds electricity into the into the electric motor. So the electric motor is only turning the it's only turning the drive uh, train. I like stereo hybrid. There's another story that I, uh, the other thing is why not just get one of those um, you know portable generators? I was going to do that. There was one from Powerhouse. It's a 500 watt generator. It looks really, really small because you don't want to reinvent the wheel if the wheel has already you know, been mastered. Obviously, the wheel has been mastered. Imagine making a wheel from scratch, from wood. You know, <laughs> You're, it's going to be pretty hard. Um, so there's one from Powerhouse, but they don't make it anymore. And the next biggest one was an 800 watt. And that on the rear rack is just gonna make the bikes un not hand you can't be you can't handle a bike like that. It's just gonna fall over into the wind and just be a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, so anyway, some more details later on it.